Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP. Today I'm going to fix another broken printer, so let's go ahead and get started. So if many of you have seen on my feed, one of the things I enjoy is I comb eBay for deals on unrepaired 3D printers. What appears to happen is these printers are typically purchased, it looks like from people from Amazon. They're returned, and rather than fix them, Reality and other companies through third parties are selling them as unrepaired 3D printers. So you can get a really good deal. This printer is an Ender 3 Max Neo, which I was able to purchase for $87, and that includes shipping. Now, as of right now, I don't know how it's broken. So together, we're going to take this out of the box, set it up, see if it's working and see what needs to be done to fix it. And then I have a variety of upgrades planned for this. As part of this build, the people at Chitu Systems have sent me some of their Conjure high-speed PLA plus filament, so I'm gonna be using that for the various parts I need to build. One of the things I'm gonna do is redesign the electronics case so I can put in my new board and also mount a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to be using that filament. I'll give you my thoughts on that. And additionally, the people at Big Tree Tech have sent me an EBB SB2209 CAN board, and I'm going to test that and install the Stealth Burner on my Ender 3 Max. Additionally, as part of the Stealth Burner, I'm going to be using a Big Tree Tech Nomi version 2. So I'm looking forward to that on the Stealth Burner as well. I've never used that, so I'm Really looking forward to setting that up and see how it works. So we can take a look at that together. And again, I'll give you my thoughts and opinions. So let's go ahead and open up this printer and see what we got and see what all needs to be done. Now, as I've already mentioned, I bought this printer used off eBay. It's in an unrepaired state. For anybody interested in purchasing an unrepaired printer, you have to be careful and just understand that there may be a lot of work and a lot of testing involved. So I'm going to go through the steps that I do. First thing I need to do is go ahead and unpack the printer. And as I said, I'm not even sure what's wrong with it yet. It looked like, according to the pictures, all the parts were there. Now, whether things are broken or not, I don't know. Or how broken. So I'll see. And as I mentioned, with taxes, I got this for approximately $87. So particularly if you like building printers, this is a great way to get started. I think, again, for the money, it's well worth it. Now, just looking at this, it looks like we're very well packed here. It's in the original uh, shipping material, so that's good. So there's no free, free for it in parts. It looks like I have some of the tools here. So we'll put those aside. Extra hot end. Spare filament. Spool holder. So we got those out. So all those parts came with it, but that's good. A uh, screen. And along with the screen here, I have several screws floating around. I'll put those aside. The screen doesn't have the plastic off, so I'm not even sure this has been fired up. I'll put that aside. Now, just looking at this, it looks like somebody has printed on it. Um, there's that. We'll have to look at that, but all the parts are looking like, here's the gantry. Now, first thing I always look at on these printers is the hot end does not appear to be in bad shape. Things are extremely loose. So I'm going to put the gantry aside. Where am I? Now that the gantry is attached to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is carefully lift this out and set this over on my desk.
And what I should have done was have one of my kids come in here and help me take this out of the box. Let me set this aside. Let's see if we have any other parts here. Looks like we got everything. There's no more screws floating around in here. So let's switch over to my desk and we'll take a look at what we got. So I have this set up on my desk. And the first thing I'm noticing is we're missing screws. That's something I can deal with. Looks like this is going to slide right in here. And the screws go in from the side here rather than the bottom. Now, something nice and simple is I believe we're set up. But right now, things I'm missing, I'm missing the screws here for the gantry. So I need to find some replacement screws here. I believe I have some. And additionally, I'm not seeing a power cord. Those really aren't props. So let me see if I can find some screws and then we'll come back and start putting this together. So I found some M545s and those appear like those are gonna be perfect for this. So I'm just gonna screw these in. And does not look like I'm lining the holes upright. So let's okay. So what I'm basically doing is just taking this case off because I want to look at the wiring, and while I'm looking at the wiring. I just want to see if there's any visible signs of a clock. Now, one thing I hate about these is I feel like I'm always missing a screw. Let's see if I can find if there's another screw here. The hun and definitely is super loose here. So let's just see if we can fix that. So I'm just going to use a little wrench here, and there's a concentric screw down here. I'm just going to tighten that. As you can see, that tightened the so now we're not loose. Let's get these this cover off. As I said these covers are pain in the butt. Now looking at this, I'm not seeing any signs of a clog. So that looks okay. So let's just put this right back on. Now, I've already tightened this, so that's rock solid. And then let's take a look at the bed. We need to tighten that. So this does look a little bent out, but I'm gonna leave that as is for right now. I'm not really, I don't care all that much how this hot end works, as long as the wiring's good. As I mentioned, I'm gonna put a stealth burner on here. And looking at this, depending on where we're at with the with the wiring and, and how it's working, I may start that as soon as today. So that's tight. Now what I'm going to do is move the camera around so we can look under the bed. I'm just going to show you how I tighten that. Okay, as we've noticed, the bed is a little wobbly. I'm trying to figure out if it's the front. I think it's both the front and the back. And what we have is we have two nuts here we can tighten on one side of the bed at these right here. What I'm going to do is just start tightening. And already this feels better. Now what's interesting is this appears this bed has six wheels on it. Which I'm not sure any of my other printers have six wheels. So the bed's already pretty tight now. That just took half a twist. Now, if somebody new had this printer, probably the bed wobbling would really make it more difficult for bed leveling. Now, just reviewing under here, it looks like we have decent springs. I'm not going to worry too much about this right now. This is all looking pretty good. So, just to tighten the bed, and same with the extruder, 
you're just looking for these nuts and you give them a half turn or two. Now, what I've been told is particularly on the other side here, one way to see if, if it's good is if it could still turn the wheel a little bit on the other side. That typically means you have it tight enough. You don't want to be able to turn it super easy, but you also don't want it to be where it's locked in place. Now, this seems to be moving pretty good. So let's go to our next step. I'm going to go ahead and install the screen. So what I'm doing is plugging it in back here. And then I have these T-nuts. I'm going to try to get that lined up appropriately. And it might help to get my driver set up. I'm just going to get this situated in the extrusion. And see if I can get around the side here to tighten it in. I'm probably going to bump the camera here, so I'm going to apologize. I made the mistake of putting this at a really awkward angle. So let me move this around and I'll get this screwed in. I have the screw, I have the screen mounted. That appears to be nice and tight. Last thing I'm going to do is before I plug it in and power it up, this is at 115 which is volts, which is appropriate for my location. And I think now I'm going to need to find a power cord. And we should be able to start this up. So let me move the camera again so you can see the screen. Or better yet, see the whole printer. And then we'll fire it up. So I found a power cord. Because again, this did not come with one. And interestingly enough, it took me a minute to find where I need to plug this in. The power is actually underneath the Z stepper. Let's see if we can get this plugged in. And it's embarrassing because I can't seem to get it without trying here. There we go. Now, I'm going to plug this in. And power switch is right here. So it's powered up. Now, right off the bat, the screen appears to be broken. That's actually okay. That's not a huge problem. Now, it looks like it's running some checks. This is interesting. But if you look, the screen is broken. So I'm going to turn this off real quick. So reposition in the camera. You can see that the screen is broken. That's one problem with this machine. What I'm going to do is pause for a second, and I actually have a screen I took off my Ender 3 V2, which I think should be the same screen that I converted over to Clipper. Now I'll convert this machine over to Clipper, but for right now, I just want to check to make sure all the electronics are working. So let me pause and I'll come right back. So I've gone ahead and changed the screen out. Now, one problem I have here this screen has professional firmware on it so that's a bit of a problem what i've decided to do is i've downloaded the latest firmware from creality which includes if we look at these top instructions the instructions for how to do the screen so let's just move things around and i'll show you how i do this the first thing i'm going to do is just delete everything on this sd card i've deleted it Here's the firmware I need to copy. Drive it, and then this firmware.zlib. We're just going to copy that over to my micro SD. Let's take a quick look at the instructions and just verify I've done that correctly. So we copy that over. We're going to turn off the printer, and I need to take the screen off the back of the screen. We'll plug in this and then flash it. So let's head over to the printer. So what I need to do is I'm just going to unplug this screen and then take out these four screws on the back. As you can see, I have the back off. SD card slots right here. I'm going to plug this SD in, plug this back in, leave it open. And let me turn the printer on. Let 
as you can see, it appears that it's loading the firmware, writing the various files and images. This will take maybe two minutes or so. Yeah, the update's finished. And it looks like the screen's coming back on. I'm going to shut this off and put the back back on. So I have the screen back connected. Let's turn the printer back on. Again, I really don't like what this power switch is. Firmware appears to be booting up. What's interesting is I'm not sure this is loading all the way. Now, what I'm going to do is let me update the firmware on the actual printer. We might as well do that while we're at it. That way we know we're on the same versions. What I've done is cleaned off the SD card and just copied this v1.1 underscore c dot bin file over to the SD. So that appears to be all I need to do for loading the firmware. I'm going to eject the SD card, and then let me switch back over to my printer, and we'll flash the firmware. So to flash it, all I'm doing is taking the SD card, coming over to the printer. I'm going to insert that into the printer. Now there's actually an SD card in here. That's good. Now I have an extra SD card although I'll format it first. Okay, so I have the SD card in. Let's turn this on and see if this updates. So now it's very possible that whoever had this printer before tried to do something with the firmware and got it all messed up. Screen was broken, but as of right now, screen's working, machine appears to be working. I have the latest version of Creality's firmware on here. Now I'm just doing this. My goal is to put this over to Clipper, but for right now, this is okay. Now I'm noticing I'm getting ambient temperatures right here for both thermistors. That's great. Let's go ahead and try doing a couple things. So I'm going to go to Control, Motion. And it's not actually what I want. Let me go to prepare. Let me try move. And this might home it. And that's actually what I want to do. As of right now, the printer is a Bowden tube, which I'm not a fan of. But I'll switch over here momentarily. But my next steps will be to switch over to the stealth burner, which is direct drive. So I'll just move the camera over so we can see if it homes correctly. So the probe appears to be working. That's good. The Z offset is set, but let's sort of ignore that for right now. For the next step here, I'm going to try preheating for PLA. This will heat up the bed so I could test that. Heat up the hot end. And then, as I mentioned, there's a piece of filament already stuck in here. So I'm going to try yanking that out. From the look of things, the hot end is heating up, as is the bed. So both of those are good. So let's take a look at where we stand. The bed is still heating up. It is getting warm, just very slow. Let me try removing this filament. Looking at the end of this, it does not appear there had been a clog. I'm just looking at this. It looks to me like somebody broke the screen, maybe messed up the firmware, and then basically decided to return the printer. Now, what's interesting about all this is this is probably by far the easiest repair job I've had to do. As of right now, everything is working. Let's try a test print, and that way we can, again, just test everything. Here's the actual filament holder. I put it off to the side earlier. So let me just clip that on here, and we're just going to start with that. So I have my Conjure ELA Plus red loaded. I can tell you I don't have a clock. Everything came through appropriately. I'm going to cool the printer down. I want to clean the bed. 
And then let me go through the leveling process. So for my initial test print, I'm just going to do a bed leveling print from Filament Friday. I really like this print. It's easy to do. And this way it lets me check the bed and make some adjustments. And then I've also done a Benchy. So once I've made sure the bed is level, I'll switch over and do the Benchy. So I have this saved to my SD card. Let me switch over and we'll start printing. I'm just going to go right to print. And there's my Filament Friday bed level. I'm going to confirm and let's go ahead and start this bad boy. Okay, so my print is started. And now what I'm going to do is start peeling. So far, everything feels like it's sticking really well. The bed actually feels really level. They said what I do is just start this print, run my finger over the print, and just it should feel like it's sticking to the bed and almost like you have a flat surface and you're running your finger over a fishing line. And if it's moving, it means you need to move the bed up. If it looks doesn't look right or looks really smashed or it's dashed, that typically means you need to move the bed down. This is looking really good. So I'm not worried about this at all now. What I'm going to do is stop this print, clean the bed again, and then let me start a Benchy. I've cleaned the bed and I'm just going to print that Benchy. So I'll start that, and then what I'll do is I'll come back in an hour, and that should be done. We'll take a look at it. So my Benchy is completed, and looking at this, it actually looks pretty good. I mean, there's maybe some lines down here that need some work, and my retraction settings need some work. But I mean, this actually looks really good. I'm really pleased with this. So right out of the box, this worked really well. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and I'm going to end this video and I'm going to use my Chudel Systems Conjure DLA Plus and put together an electronics case, which I've already started printing. And then in my next video, I'm going to install the new electronics case and then put on a, I have a Big Tree Tech SKR 3. And so I'm going to use that board in this machine and I'll convert it over to Clipper, rewire everything. So hope you have a good day. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to hearing from you. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.